Hey there, how you doing? Tim Warner here welcoming you to a brief tutorial entitled Upload a Local VM Image to Microsoft Azure. Here's the use case. You've got a Hyper-V virtual machine running on premises that you're going to create an image from. So we're going to prepare this VHD in all likelihood if you're running Hyper-V hypervisor on premises you're using generation 2 so the disk is actually VHDX. We're going to take some steps to prepare the generalized local image for Azure. We'll then upload that VHD to Azure Blob Storage. Next, we'll convert that uploaded VHD into a managed image and then lastly deploy a VM based on that custom image. Let's get into the demo. I'd like to show you how it works. Okay, we're on a Windows Server 2019 machine here that's configured as a Hyper-V host. As you can see in Hyper-V Manager, I have a Windows Server 2016 virtual machine that's currently running. Now let's pop into that session. I have an RDP session right here. It's a machine running in Windows Server Core, as you can tell. What we're going to want to do, first of all, is generalize this image. So the idea is that we set up the environment of the virtual machine the way we want our golden image to look for new VMs that we'll use in Azure. We'll deploy new VMs in Azure based on this custom image. So we'll want to invoke good old sysprep. C Windows System32 sysprep sysprep.exe. I'm going to select for system cleanup action well, just going to leave it alone at Ubi and enter out-of-box experience. Crucially, we're going to generalize, and then we're going to shut down the virtual machine once we've generalized it. And if you're not aware of sysprep, this is going to remove any unique or identifying characteristics from the machine. Things like its host name, the operating system activation status, TCP IP configuration. It's a crucial step for preparing a machine as an image file. That didn't take long at all to do, so let me close out of that connection. Our next order of business is to prepare the VHD. Now, principally, if I do a direct, well, I don't have to do a directory listing because you can see it right here in my PowerShell session, that the underlying virtual hard disk file for that VM we were just looking at is called win2016.vhdx. Now, we're going to need to convert that to a generation 1 VHD. Unfortunately, you can't do that conversion without having to create a new instance of the disk. But the good news is that installing the Hyper-V role on a server gives us the Hyper-V PowerShell command. So we can do convert VHD, and the path here will be, we're already in the folder, so I'll just path out to win2016. The destination path, I've got a, another folder on this system called VHD, and I'll call the image windows2016b.vhd. And then this is really important. We're going to want to use the VHD type parameter, and we want to select fixed for this. If you have a flexible size disk and you upload it to Azure, it's not going to work. You won't be able to create an image from it. You have to make sure that the VHD is fixed. At the end of this tutorial, I'll give you a couple Azure documentation links, one of which gives you additional points to ponder when you're preparing a local VHD for upload into Azure. Okay, so let's submit this conversion process. Now, you're not going to sit here with me waiting. Unfortunately, it'd be cool if you were. But while we're waiting for this, let's take a look at the rest of my environment. Now, of course, you can transfer that VHD up into Azure Storage in a number of different ways. I'm choosing Azure Storage Explorer. This, as you hopefully know, is Microsoft's free cross-platform graphical utility for interacting with Azure Storage. And I've got it running on my Windows server. I've authenticated into my subscription. And you can see in my subscription, I have a storage account called Instructor Diagnostics. In the blob service, I've already created a container called Uploaded VHDs. And that's going to be where we temporarily store the Windows 2016B VHD file. Now, what's cool, one of the cool things, actually, about Storage Explorer, if you go to Edit, Settings, is that we have native integration with AZ Copy. Now, you might be thinking as you've been watching this video, Tim, couldn't we have just stated a command prompt and use AZ Copy? Of course. This is just simply one of many. Because I'm doing a demo, I figured I would give you graphical utilities. But you know, there's n number of ways to accomplish any task. AZ Copy I like to describe as a command line blob transfer tool that's analogous in some ways to good old RoboCopy. For instance, we can set a maximum transfer rate so that we don't saturate our 
connection into Azure. And you can also do concurrency, file buffers, retries. AZ Copy is really cool, so it's preferable. It will use it by default, but you can customize its behavior again through the settings. So here we go with Storage Explorer. I'll put that to the side. Looks like the conversion process is going to take a bit longer. Now that we have our generalized VHD created, we can proceed with our upload. So let me open an instance of Explorer focused on the VHD folder on my drive E. Let me sort by date modified inverse, arrange my windows. I use the old snap technique where we can snap one window to one side, one window to the other, and I'll simply drag and drop. We can follow progress in Azure Storage Explorer by looking down below in the activities pane. Just parenthetically, this is pretty cool. Notice that all of the underlying AZ calls that Azure Storage Explorer is making are recorded here. Copy AZ command to clipboard. Let's just take a quick look at that. Let's select that link and then let's pop it open in Visual Studio Code. And AZ copy is performing an anonymous upload in this case using a shared access signature token, a SAS token. We can see here in the SAS URL, we've got our permission set to read and write. We absolutely need write access to perform this upload operation. Okay, after a while that completed. So now we have our generalized VHD up in our Azure subscription in the instructor diagnostic storage account. So let's now switch over to the Azure portal and let's dial up the images blade. This is where our managed images are stored in our subscription and we can create one based on that uploaded blob. So let's go to add. I'll name this Windows Server 2016 B. I think I'll actually put it in a new subscription that I'll call demo. Okay. Choose my home region here. I'll leave off zone resiliency. This is a Windows OS disk and it is generation one. We do have generation two support in Azure nowadays, but it's limited. So I'm just going with old fashioned gen one in this example. What we want to do here is navigate in the storage blob property. We'll browse out into our instructor diagnostic storage account into uploaded VHDs, and then we'll grab that fixed VHD that we just uploaded, select it. We're going to make this in a standard HDD and I'll leave host caching at the default. You can optionally include data disks in the image, but in this case, I'll just stay with the OS disk and we'll click create to submit the image process. That didn't take long at all to do. To finish this out, let's go to the virtual machines blade and I'll show you how to build a new virtual machine based on that uploaded image. We'll go to add here. As you know, we'll fill out our subscription and our target resource group. I'll call the VM Win 2016 in my home region. We'll leave high availability off the menu here. What I really want to show you is in the image property, we click browse all public and private images. And here the secret is we don't stay in the Azure marketplace, but we switch over to my items and we'll see our image right here. As a matter of fact, Windows Server 2016 B. Bring that back and then we can proceed with the rest of the configuration. I just selected initial options because this is just a proof of concept. So we'll submit this deployment. Now the deployment's complete. Let's go to the resource and connect. I did affix a public IP address to this virtual machine. Of course, that's another question if this were a production deployment. I'm just doing a simple lab. Let's download the RDP connectoid. I'll bring it out onto my desktop and fire it up. We'll accept the self-signed certificate presented by the VM and I'll authenticate with a valid administrative identity. Again, accept the certificate, wait for the server core environment to show up for us. I think the point's made. You now know the process of taking an on-premises generalized VHD and popping it up into Azure and deploying a virtual machine based on that image. Some learning resources to supplement what I've taught you. First of all, check the Azure documentation to learn how to prepare a VHD or VHDX for Azure Upload. That URL is timw.info forward slash md1. Another docs article I think you'd like are the steps to create a managed image. That link is timw.info forward slash md2. I hope you learned a lot in this lesson. As always, you can find me on Twitter. My handle is techtrainertim. All of my Pluralsight courses are at timw.info forward slash ps. My personal website, which includes a contact form, is techtrainertim.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Take good care.